Berserk. Okay, uh, well, let's try knight f3 again. Berserk 98. Knight f6. Uh, let's continue with the reti style rather than going directly to an English with c5. See if he wants to play d uh, c4, I mean. <laughs> See if he wants to play d5. d5, c4 would be the reti, the reti gambit. Okay, so he's stopping to think. He does go d5, okay. Let's put that out there then. See if he takes it. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for a second. And uh, he can actually uh, grab the pawn and hold on to it now if he wants to. And uh, that might be interesting. It leaves him with a weakness on c6 uh, because the way he holds on to the pawn is by playing the move b5. So that leaves this uh, c6 pawn with no defenders. And I can start harassing it with the uh, typical moves like a4, b3. So he doesn't, doesn't take. Okay, well now I'm going to fianchetto the other bishop, so let's go ahead and do that. And now it's not a gambit anymore, because I will have to take back, I think, if he plays that. Ah, and now he plays e5. Very interesting. So if I just um, play bishop b2 anyway, and he pushes on with e4, I can play knight to d4, looking at the f5 square. He can kick it again with c4, c5 rather, kick my knight with c5. So bishop, pawn, knight, pawn, knight could come out here to b. Knight could come out to b5, he could kick it again. <laughs> Might start to run out of squares. Um, okay, so let's start by taking. And now he's got this big center, and then I'm going to try and fire, fire against it. Let's, um, let's see. I want to play the move d3, just so I have uh, the ability to trade off his e-pawn if he pushes it forward. Uh, I do have to worry that it opens up this diagonal. So d3, bishop b4 check, um, bishop d2 I have to play, and he could trade. I think that's still okay for me. Let's see what he does here. I'm looking to castle soon, and I have uh, maybe a slight edge in development if things open up quickly. And the other sort of long-term plan, intermediate-term plan, is uh, to go after his extended center here. Classic hypermodern strategy: lure, lure the pawns forward, and then try to counterattack them. So what should he play here? Just developing with bishop b4 is probably a good move. <clears throat> he could uh, move his knight again to get out of the way of his bishop, his light squared bishop. Um, I don't know if he has any big attacking ideas. Knight coming forward to c5. Or he could push on immediately. What does that do? I would take, he would take, and then I would have to move my pawn. Might leave me a little bit awkward, but his uh, advanced e-pawn would be... Okay, so he pauses to defend um, and prepares to castle. So I'm going to develop one more piece and then castle myself. So I think a pretty logical development of the game so far. There's two pieces attacking the pawn and two defending it. 
and uh, and black is just holding on to the center which is often the right thing to do just hold on to that center don't allow it to be pushed forward or lured forward um, but uh, as long as you hold on to that big center you control a lot of squares in the middle of the board so so just sitting with it and not not being uh, too quick to push it forward is some sometimes an idea he has a little bit of a log jam with his pieces he needs to unwind I guess ah that was the problem with moving this knight is that it does leave the uh, e-pawn undefended so maybe he needs to play rook to um, rook to e8 here to defend the pawn ah he did and and uh, that allows his knight to move um, if I don't get more pressure on it so the question is should I continue developing with the knight? That's the most natural kind of move, knight d2 or knight c3. Or should I poke immediately at the center with the d4 or e4? So d4, he takes, I take, and he's left with this isolated pawn that I can go after. So he'll probably push d4, he plays e4. And then um, I can't put my knight on e5. The knight could go to uh, h4, actually. The knight could go to h4, and if he tries to trap it with the move like g4, it can come forward to the f, uh, to the f5 square, which is currently blocked by his knight. The, the knight's a little bit exposed there. But if I get a knight to h4 to f5, it can come back to a central square. Hmm, let's see. One downside of, um, of d4 and e4 is that it uh, blocks in this bishop, but I could reposition the bishop out to um, out to a3, maybe trade off this bishop. Anyway, if I get a knight to um, knight to f5, that might be a good square for it. There's there's sometimes nice attacking ideas with that knight on f5. Ah, so he kind of spotted that idea. Well, he's he's uh, defending his king side by retreating his knight. He's also taking away the last square that this knight has. So he's threatening g5. And my knight will have nowhere to go. That is very true. Let's see. So I don't have time to play f3. f3, g5. He just takes my knight. If I go uh, f4 and he plays g5, I can take the pawn. And if he takes here en passant, I can take back with the knight. And I'll have an open f file and a backwards d pawn. Yeah, that looks interesting. Let's, let's play it. And if he pushes his um, e-pawn forward, it looks annoying at first, but my knight can come back to um, f3, and it should be fine there. Knight back to f3 to e5 might be a good idea at that point. So I think taking on passant is probably the best move. Leaves me with this weak d-pawn that he can, e-pawn, weak e-pawn that he can pile up on. And maybe has ideas of uh, getting a bishop or a queen to uh, e3 and checking my king along that short, short diagonal there. G4, I just take it. Yeah, I don't see other moves for him. 
Bishop development, knight development. Is there something the queen can do? Ah, he just controls the... Um, he controls the uh, <coughs> f5 square, so I can't play knight f5. My knight still has no moves, so maybe he's looking for a way to um, attack it. I can play pawn to f5, and then he plays g5. Interesting. So my knight can sit here till um, till he figures out, or till he uh, <laughs> he gathers enough momentum to attack it. Okay, so I should um, get my knight into the game. Or right, here, let's do this thing with the bishop first. This bishop is looking like a not very good piece, so let's trade it off if uh, if he allows. And now I'm expecting he's going to maintain this pawn on e4 there to, to remove squares from my knights. The only place my knight can go back to is actually back to g2. So I'll have to move this bishop at some time to get that knight into the game unless uh, something breaks on the king side here. But, uh, well, he, he passed on the opportunity to take on Passant there. So I thought he would take. He doesn't have to take. Um, this bishop is defended. He could look for another developing move. He could retreat his bishop. And he just takes. That makes sense. Okay, so we're on move 14. He's down to two minutes. I've got three and a half minutes. So, well, he's been thinking, but uh, maybe a little too long. On these early games so you know I have rook to um, rook c1 knight b5 those kind of ideas or the knight could come back to c2 and go to uh, maybe e3 that might be interesting putting pressure on the d-pawn I'll start with rook c1 and where's his pieces going You may be relying a little too much on the increment. I think you can't. <laughs> you can't think that hard at this stage of the game. It's uh, it's not that slow a game. Okay, so he brought his knight there. His queen is looking here, and my knight. You know, actually, I guess one idea he had there, which might have been interesting, was playing h6 and g5 and forcing my uh, my knight to move that way. Okay, so I still have a problem with f5. He takes, I mean, he pushes, he doesn't take. And my knight has no squares. Um, maybe he's looking to play f5 himself. Okay, so let's go with rook c1. This knight is loose. Uh, I should have checked for double attacks based on a loose knight, but is queen here or here? It's not attacking anything else, so it doesn't seem to be a problem. Hmm. Okay, he's developing his bishop. Ah, and he's covering the um, covering the b5 square. That's good. So, can I double on the c file? Rook c3, he can just bring his rook over. Okay, so let's uh, route the uh, knight around this way. Uh, let's see, this knight could go to um, b4 or... Oh, is that a working tactic? So, I can't take with the pawn because he takes my uh, knight with his queen, but it doesn't work because I can take with the rook unless... Um, ah, and then he's got a fork. Hey, that's pretty nice. So, is it better to take with the pawn or the rook? Probably the, the rook. Nice little tactic there. I totally missed that.
So is there some uh, tempo move I can play here? I play knight here, for example. He has to take the rook. And then um, I can play knight to here or here with check. King moves. So there's no, there's no great attacking ideas there that I see. Pinning the pawn doesn't work because his bishop is controlling that square. Rook here, rook to f5. He takes the rook, I take back. Um, so I get um, two pieces. Two pieces for the rook. So he'll probably take the knight, then I take here. I guess that's the, the best way out of this situation. Okay, so I was just checking to make sure there's no discovered attack with his uh, bishop. And uh, I think I'm okay here. Let's see. He's going to keep taking. Let's take back. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, materials even. His, uh, his bishop is pinned for the moment. My knight can come into e3. This is not hanging. I also have rook to um, e4. e5, rather. Rook e5. Better than that. His queen, his king is a little exposed there. So maybe queen to d2. He can't push that pawn because I've cut it covered with the knight and the queen. Yeah, so he goes there. I'm looking at this pawn. Queen d2. Well, he unpinned the bishops. So the bishop can come in. Bishop is defended by the knight, so it's not hanging. It's also just queen f8, f1. I don't know, I like putting the queen on a dark square like that and activating it. Pawn to e3, knight takes pawn. Well, I'm planning just to go queen... Um, Queen g4 check, and he takes, and I take with the rook check, and then he can block with the knight, and we'll just play on from that position. Um, or in this case, maybe the knight check is better. Let's see. Well, queen check. Just simplify the game a little bit. It's not that simple, <laughs> but... Uh, Oh, really? Okay. Well, I need to uh, rescue my uh, rep. So anyway, this is, this is the idea. I should be able to round up that pawn, but I can't actually. I can't round up that pawn because he's got the bishop on it, so knight here attacking his bishop or here is this better well let's try not to try not to lose on time so dust is settled and um, three four to four even even material yeah he's done a good job of holding on let's um check and go after the um, go after the apon He's got knight here. Well, he didn't play it. Okay, let's uh, let's undermine these pawns. He had knight to c4. That would have been interesting. Um, that's good too. It's a double attack. Let's go ahead and take this pawn. Defend uh, this one. Activate my king. Yeah, it looks like he's weaseling out of this, <laughs> wiggling out of this, I should say. So um, here we go. Uh, 
uh, just king up to defend the pawn. He decides not to defend the pawn. No, he's probably trying to set up that skewer against my king. But is that really so great? Let's see. Yeah, I do have to be careful where I go with the king. Oh no, my my um my pawn is covering those squares. So there's no check here. So he goes after that pawn. back. Let's take. Let's uh, attack his uh, knight. So I got the pawns back. Well, it's tough to play with, uh, <laughs> with the clock ticking down like that. <laughs> so he goes for simplification. So this should be a draw. We will see. Let's start by uh, keeping his king out of the game. He can't uh, really advance that pawn any further. And uh, he might be turning this into a, uh, a loss of some kind. Here, let's go here. Yeah, maybe I can just go for a draw by just uh, taking. Taking this pawn is a draw. But, uh, well, still, I, I still have winning ideas here, don't I? Well, I have to be taking the pawn in a position where he needs to sacrifice the rook. Yeah, this is going to be a draw. This is a draw, so let's do the draw offer. Okay, well, that was an interesting game. I will uh, upload this and do a postmortem, and see you guys later. Bye.